My name's Rick Ellis. I'm a brown belt under Roy Dean, and I run a little academy in Wyoming. I'm gonna punch his wrist in, throw my legs up and over. Okay, that's all I care about right now is locking my ankles. I need my knee at the shoulder line. Really, really important. I don't want to end up here because he'll just swim out. And then we're back to where we started. What is jujitsu? <laughs> That's a really deep question. On the one hand, it's a self-defense system. It's a martial art. It's a killer workout. But it is so much more than that. All right, so later stage, he goes for the triangle and he actually locks it up. My arm's out of position. I can't posture, I don't have the leverage to open. There's a meme going around that jujitsu is the art of involuntary yoga. That's pretty funny. I need to begin to stack him. I'm gonna take my thumb in the collar, make a fist, post on the mat, and now I can come up and start cutting the angle. My knee goes in. Cut the angle, cut the angle, cut the angle. And look at this. Retain the leg. Me more. Evandra Nunes calls jujitsu human surfing, and I love that definition because it speaks to the highest expression of jujitsu, which is taking an attacker's energy, integrating within it, flowing with it, blending with it, which is what a surfer does on a wave. A surfer on a wave can't resist the wave, they can't redirect the wave, they can't control the wave. All they can do is become part of the wave. So try to go as far as you can, even exaggerate it. So I'm here about parallel. If I can go even a few degrees, five, eight degrees more, that's better. And if you're still not quite getting it over yet, try kicking the ceiling. Right. I think of jujitsu as a vehicle that allows you to perfect your mind, your body, and your soul. It's very, very powerful. Same thing, come in, come in, cut the angle. But this time, the knee bar is not available because he hides. Boom. Just back step, right? Now we can change the angle, the pitch. That make sense? All right, with your partners. One, two, three. A few months ago, Roy reached out to me and he said, hey, I think you're ready now. Let's get you to Black Belt. Why don't you begin preparing a demo? And uh, so I'm now about six weeks out from my demo. I've been training hard, man. I've been doing my cardio. I've been doing strength and conditioning. I've been drilling a lot. I've been sparring a lot. And uh, so far, my body's holding up. Uh, okay. But uh, I'm, I'm simultaneously terrified uh, and really excited because, you know, the black belt is the culmination of everything you've worked for. And it's not the end, of course. Of course it's not the end. Everyone who earns their black belt says it's just a new beginning, but it's a very important milestone and I am pretty excited for that. The demo is two things. It is a display of skill and it is a display of heart. It's a chance to show your friends, your family, your teammates, your coaches that you have the skill to perform at the level that you're being promoted to. And it's a chance to show your heart on the mat because it's hard. You get shark tanked, you have to show techniques. At Blue Belt, you have to show 50 techniques. At Purple Belt, you have to demonstrate uh, a lot of combinations. At Brown Belt, you have to build on that. I can tell you, as someone that's done two demos before, that it's a very, very powerful rite of passage. Go, Rick. Go, Rick. Transition. Transition. Yeah. 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 Ye
Injuries are part of the journey of jujitsu. You cannot train in a combat sport or really any sport without the risk of injury. I've had many injuries over the years. I tore my rotator cuff and had surgery. I blew a disc out in my back and had surgery. I've sprained my back. I've sprained my knees. I've hyperextended my, my ankles. I've hyperextended my elbows. I've uh, torn a tendon in my finger. I broke my nose on Roy Dean's head. Thank you very much, Roy. Rick dropped in for a double leg and I dropped in for a double leg. Yeah, it's a little crooked. It, 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 <laughs> there, it's going this way, but in real life it's going this way. Resonated through my skull and I could hear it and it wasn't just like a pop, it was like a <laughs> crunch, kind of explosively. Yeah. It's crooked. It's not crooked, it's just more directional. That's right. If I could do it all over again, I would give up the takedown. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. He, would, he wouldn't give up the takedown. <laughs> because he knows that once he's taken down, it's all over. So the day after I break my nose, I went to the doctor because it was pointed sideways. And the doctor said, yeah, we can reset it, but it's really swollen right now. So why don't you come back in a week or two when the swelling's down and we'll pop it back into place. So I'm like, okay. So I went to back, back to class that night and we drilled some technique and then it's time to spar. And I square up with Donald Bowerman, big D. Donald was a very special athlete. He was, he would go on to be Roy Dean's first black belt. He was the Gracie world champion at brown belt. He won everything. He, every competition he entered, he took the gold. And he was just one of those guys that had a knack for jujitsu and a knack for crushing everybody, myself included. We go to bump fists and I point to my nose and I said, dude, be a little careful. And he's like, yeah, no problem, man. And of course, he mounts me, Hodger Gracie style. He gets one hand in the collar for the cross collar choke. And he goes to put the second hand in and bam, straight across the nose. And blood starts pouring out of my nose and I scream and I kicked him off of me and I start yelling at him and my adrenaline is surging. And um, man, he felt so bad. He was all apologetic and he ended up leaving, going home early because he felt so bad. And finally my nose stops bleeding and I went to the bathroom and I look in the mirror and it was straight. He had actually reset my nose. After that, I got smarter and for the next few months I wore a face mask.
My plan is to do jujitsu until the wheels fall off, like Joe Rogan likes to say. And look, it gets a lot harder when you get older, no doubt about it. Your joint integrity declines, your mobility declines, your, your reaction time goes down, your maximum heart rate declines. That's a big one because it means you cannot sustain high output the way you can when you're younger. You just have to accept when you're older that you are not going to get the tap as often and as decisively as you would if you were younger. And that can be really frustrating. And so you simply have to put away the ego and accept that there are nights when the blue belts are gonna give you a really hard time in a way that they wouldn't if you were 20, 30 years younger. I'm looking forward to seeing how my game continues to evolve and how I can continue to learn to be effective even as my physical skills decline. never gets easier. Never, ever, ever gets easier. You know, and it's gotta keep showing up. I mean, that's the key. I'm not the most athletic guy. I'm pretty damn old, but you know, Jiu Jitsu gives you answers, gives you solutions, even as your physical attributes wane. So, and you white belts, blue belts, keep on trucking, man. It gets more powerful and the rewards are greater every year you do it. And it goes deeper into your soul in a way that is very, very powerful. Very powerful. Thank you. 
Go, 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 go